Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics 1. This lecture is entitled Logic Simplification Examples Using Boolean Rules in De Morgan's Theorem. We've had a previous round of examples dealing with just Boolean rules, and I stayed away from De Morgan's Theorem. Then I introduced De Morgan's Theorem, did a bunch of examples about just De Morgan's Theorem, a little bit of Boolean rules snuck in there, but now we're going to combine them together. And I'm certain you've been waiting, bated breath, since your last lecture, where I kind of left off in the middle of something pretty complicated. And for the purposes of completeness, let's go ahead and see if we can do this. If you remember right, what we did is we had an expression where we were capable of getting, getting it to this level of uh, simplification, and we broke the De Morgan's theorem, excuse me, broke that giant overbar right there before we distributed anything through. And if you remember right, the answer we get through, and go ahead and I mean, see if you can do this without me walking you through it. We ended up getting an answer of A or not B, ORed with not C and D. And the whole thing was ORed with a not E, and that we can ultimately get an SOP expression, A not E, or not B, not E, or not C and D, ended with not E. And my challenge was in that last lecture is don't break it there. Don't do De Morgan's theorem. See if you can distribute this guy into there and to there. And we came up with a pretty challenging polynomial. And ultimately, we should, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that in green, regardless of how we do this thing, should come up with this. And what's really cool is I'm going to use a bunch of Boolean rules to do this. And this is really, really complicated because you got to stay organized. Let's go ahead and distribute that in before we break it. What we get is not A and B distributed into C, not A and B distributed into not D. And now that whole thing is negated. We've got not E. I'm going to give myself a little bit of room because we've got a, got a lot of stuff going on here next couple minutes. Okay, so I made that a little bit prettier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the De Morgan's theorem here. Again, it's purposely making this is a little bit harder than what we did previously. So De Morgan's theorem, I'm going to break the bar. Okay, so break the bar means I have to change the sign. So it was an or and it was now it's going to be an and. What was it oring before? It was oring not A and B and C and not A and B and not D. We're actually going to and the negation of those. Again, whole thing anded with not E. Not pretty because now we got to go ahead and do De Morgan's theorem here. So it was anding not A and B and C. So why don't we or not not A, not B, not C. Okay, so we're demorganizing that one. What's this one here? Those were the original variables. What's their complements? Change the sign. And that whole thing is in the parentheses being ended with not E. Okay, multiplication of a trinomial. I'm not expecting you to know this, but in case you ever want to know this, it's a really cool tool. So it's kind of like a little table format for when you're multiplying uh, two trinomials together. What you get is this summation ax plus ay plus az plus bx plus by plus bz plus cx plus cy plus cz. Ultimately, when you do that to all this right here, you're going to get this expression right here. Before we do that, let's make it a little bit simpler. What are those double negations? Get rid of those. Get rid of those. Get rid of those. So now you can say a not b not c, a not b, d. You can then figure out your product terms within that matrix. And that's what the matrix looks like. I'm staying alphabetical. And one thing before you even do this, look at that term. Look at that term. Those might be extremely helpful in our Boolean analysis. Right. Okay, let's go ahead and see if you can take that matrix and put out ultimately what those two multiplied trinomials will look like. It's going to look like this. That's what's inside the parentheses. And ultimately, again, it's multiplied by not E. I'm going to stick not E over on this side right now so we can track. Like I said, what are the two key terms here, that guy and that guy? It's pretty neat because according to our Boolean rules, A ended with A, it's going to be equal to an A. What's not B ended with not B? It's going to be equal to a B. Given myself, where am I going to? And I can rewrite this expression. And the only thing I did really kind of cunning is I switched that a not C over there. And let's close the whole thing up in parentheses right there. The reason why I switched that A not C over there is because there's a common term in all this stuff right here, namely A. There's a common term in all this stuff right here, not B. Let's go ahead and if we can factor out A and not B respectfully. It's going to look like this. There you go. 
Is there a rule that perhaps says that one ORID with something is equal to one? Use that same rule. Is there a rule that says something ANDed with a one? Finally distribute out what we have here. A not E, not B, not E, or not C, D, and not E. Grand unveiling is this expression equivalent to what we had up here. Let's go ahead and bring it down for comparison. There you go. They are in fact equivalent through all that crazy stuff that I went through there. They are equivalent what we came up here. Yes, yes I am. I'm not going to give you something this complicated, guys. It's a great example, though, because it is using all the stuff that we did with uh, Boolean laws, and it shows you, regardless of where you uh, De Morgan's or Boolean rule or distribute a factor or whatever, regardless where you do it, as long as you're doing it correctly, you're going to come up with the same answer. Okay, let's go ahead and give you a couple of examples here within uh, the scope of reality and see if you can uh, tackle some of these guys. Okay, let's try example two using a logic simplification using Boolean rules and De Morgan's theorem. And here we've got this gobbledygook of a bunch of AND gates, NOTs gates, and NOR gates, and an OR gate. And our job is to kind of figure out, okay, what is the expression originally, and potentially see if we can use uh, some of our simplification techniques to come up with a far easier circuit to understand and to implement. And one of the ways that you might be able to potentially help yourself out and see what these circuits are is, is believe it or not, guys, is just use colors. Use colors for these signals. Uh, I know it seems kindergarten-ish, but first day, seriously, guys, first day at GE15 school, you know what I did? I came home that evening, got out my skizzies, the schematics, and light blue. I still remember doing light blue, 24 volts DC, going through and just giving a color code for all these things. So where's A being fed to? Where's B being fed to? Where's C being fed to? Just go ahead and make the wires different colors. So here's a technique. Okay, so there's the color technique. And notice how I've got A is red, B is dark blue. I've got not B as light blue. I don't know if you can see that. It's not exactly the best color. You don't have to do that one. A C is green. Even if I didn't have these things as different colors, notice those dots. You know, it's connected. I forgot one right there. It's not connected. You know, the, if there's no dot there, it's not connected. Start thinking of in terms of intermediary values. What's coming out of here? It's A and not B. Um, what is the output of the NOR gates? And this is pretty tricky here. Is, is B or C is being NORed together. So B or C then negated. What's the output of the second NOR gate? It's also B or C negated. You can already see that there's a potential way of simplifying the circuit, even without doing any of the analysis we've discussed thus far. Why am I having two separate gates produce the same output? Maybe I could use one gate and then use that to drive other outputs there, excuse me, other inputs. So you can already see, even if you don't understand any of these Boolean rules and De Morgan's theorem, there are ways to shortcut this thing. Why would I ever have two things have the same output? What is the output of the first AND gate? Well, it's ANDing A with B nor C. Output of the third AND gate, it's ANDing B with B nor C. Finally, what is the output of our OR gate? Well, it's AND not B, ORed with A AND B nor C, or B AND with B nor C. Okay, that is our expression X. Can we potentially come up with simplification of these? using some of De Morgan's theorems and Boolean rules and laws. So we've set ourselves up here with our final expression, our complicated expression. What we're going to do is go ahead and look for ways to simplify this. And since we're talking about De Morgan's theorem, maybe we should use De Morgan's theorem. And I've been really concentrating on a lot of the NAND perspective of the De Morgan's theorem, so that's why I'm going to use some NORs this time. Complement of the sum, why not say, I can make this the product of the complements. So I can say, not B. And it with not C. And that's nothing else has changed. And I could do the same thing here because I've got another nor. So I'm De Morgan's, D for De Morgan's. Due to the associative property of ands, I can kind of get rid of those parentheses. Where is your cheat sheet, guys? Where's your cheat sheet? Do you see potentially any of the Boolean rules that we could start using now? We can't De Morgan's anymore. We got we used De Morgan's to kind of break up those parentheses. You know, it's they're isolated groups. Now we can actually start using these. If you got your rules handy, maybe you could see something like A anded with not A is always equal to a zero. What's zero and something? What's always a zero? 
What's zero ORed with something? Well, it has no effect for an OR gate. What rules am I using? Now that's, you know, pause these things, do these things with me. What's the common term I'm seeing here? A not B, I can factor that out. What's one ORed with something? Well, it's always equal to a one. What's one and something? So I shrunk that whole circuit, this whole crazy expression. Here, this whole circuit with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gates. It went to a single AND gate with A, and B still needs to get inverted. There's my output X. Yes, it's that magical. I mean, all silliness aside, you know, it's uh, you're applying these rules, and you think they don't have any bearing to what you're doing. They do. I mean, think about the complexity of this above design. Think about the weight, just the sheer number of components. They're physical devices. Think about all the wiring, all those possible interactions that could possibly go wrong versus that guy. Substantially easier to install, troubleshoot, maintain, and it is less power consumption and less weight. Let's go ahead and try another example of this. Okay, here's a third example, a little bit different than example two, because I gave you the circuit. We had to come up with the expression. Okay, now I'm giving you the expression. See if you can come up with what the original circuit looks like before we even do any of the simplifications. What I'm going to see here is I, I'm going to give you some hints. There's some NANs and there's two NANs and a NOR. How are they put together? Let's see if what you can come up. Your version of the circuit looks like mine. Okay, so there's my version. I've got A and B being negated. I've got A and C, that result being negated. Finally, I've got A or B or C, the whole result negated, all being fed into a single three input OR gate. Okay, so that's what my circuit looks like. Potentially, we might be able to save ourselves some money and some time, some connections and some weight and some power consumption by doing some simplification. So what am I going to do? Well, I got a bunch of NANs and Nors, what you think I'm going to do? I'm going to do De Morgan's theorem. So De Morgan's this guy, De Morgan's that guy, De Morgan's this guy. See what you get? You should look something like this. Okay, and they respectfully break down into these. Can I find somewhere else I might be able to do some simplification? Maybe some rearrangement. Looks like this. And all I did was just put these two not A's together. And so what's something or with itself? We don't really need to do that two times. And notice I'm resisting the temptation to put the big old bar like that, because that's that's incorrect. We purposely broke that apart for a reason. Let's keep it apart. How do I do the rest of this thing here? It doesn't matter which term you choose, because look at this guy right here. There's a common term for every single one of them. I can go with a not A as a common term between that and that. I can go with a not B as a common term for that and that, and a not C. It doesn't matter. You're going to come up with the same thing. Just watch what happens here. I'm going to choose not B. Okay, so not B is a common term for, let's see, this guy and that guy. So I have not touched not A and not C. So I got to still put those guys in there. What does this look like? Well, one with something is always equivalent to a one. One ended with something. We don't really need that one in there because I like keeping things in order. Not A or not B or not C. Our expression simplifies down into ultimately three inverters feeding an OR gate. A little bit simpler than that. And the answer is, is no, that's stupid. That's a waste of time because check it out. What is this? You guys should see this. You should see this. You should recognize this. What is not A or with not B or with not C? It's a negative OR. Why am I wasting time with those inverters? I'm just going to grab a negative OR out of the box. What's a negative OR? You go to the box, there's no negative ORs. Where are the negative ORs? Well, check it out. Those are not ands, the nands, the positive logic equivalent of that. Okay, so that's, we're going in reverse now. This is what I referred to earlier. Professor Kleit's Digital Electronics and Practical Approach refers to this uh, as re-Morgans, going in reverse. I find that term endlessly witty. I think that's pretty good. You're going backwards. So he's taking the de Morgans, and he's re-morganing it. Get it? I love that joke. Okay, so that's a really cool example right there. We used de Morgan's theorem th in three separate spots. We used some of our Boolean rules and laws, and then we got ourselves down to a negative logic equivalent, and we just grabbed the positive logic equivalent, which is a single gate, which is substantially less weight and power consumption and connections than the four gates we had previously. Okay, let's try example four, which is really hard here. We got some 
De Morgan's opportunities in Boolean rules and a bunch of distribution that we can do. Let's go ahead and try distribution first. Okay, I know that there's some things that I can break up uh, for you De Morgan's here, but I'm just going to kind of illustrate, okay, why we're going to use De Morgan. So let's take this A and B, distribute it into this thing right here. So what I get is A and B and C, ORed with A and B. Look at what's under the operator. It's not playing with A and B. I gotta somehow break that thing up so it will play with what I've just distributed through. Okay, so that's the purpose of these De Morgan theorems. Let's go ahead and De Morgan that guy. So what did I do? I distributed. I'm gonna De Morgan. Might as well De Morgan that guy right there. So A B C or A B, and that is ended with not B or not D. What is this? That's not A or not B. Again, this whole parentheses is ended with C and D. What am I gonna do right here? Distribute again. Okay, now they're playing. So I'm gonna say distribute A, B, C, or A, B, and with not B. So there you go. That's kind of a good point. We're starting to recognize some of our Boolean rules coming out. What about that? That should be equal to zero via what rule? Again, have your cheat sheet out while you're doing this. Via what rule is that? Again, keep these keep these intermediary steps because you never know that it might make a mistake. You might forget something. You might put a not where you're not supposed to. Okay, it may look hopeless now. What are we gonna do? It's not hopeless because look at this. Distribute that C D in there. You're gonna find some other opportunities. A B C C D. A B not D C D. Or not A C D or not B C D. That's pretty recognizable. A B C D. What is a not D and a D? That sounds like A, B, C ended with a zero. Let's simplify that. What rule am I using? Think about these things. These are great exercises. Yes, this one's a little hard. Okay, got rid of that guy. Okay, so here's a little bit of leap of logic. I'm actually gonna factor out that C, D. And let's see if you can come up with, because that's a common term for every single one of these things. See if you can come up with potentially a recognizable Boolean law. There's a couple ways you can actually tackle this one. And I'm going to rearrange it if you're not seeing it. This is one of the ways to rearrange it. What I'm seeing here is that rule 11. What does that mean? I can simplify that down. Look at this guy right there. B or not B, it's always going to be equal to 1. Excuse me, not A or 1. It's always equal to 1. CD. CD ended with a 1. CD. Look at that, guys. The final answer is the and of two terms. We took that whole thing right there. And again, what I'm look, looking for is your recognition, obviously recognition of distribution to Morgan's distributed. What was the Boolean rule that I used right there? Go through your list. What was the Boolean rule I used right there? What was the Boolean rule I used to get rid of that guy? How did I get rid of this guy? How did I get rid of a not D and a D and made it suddenly a zero? How did that zero simplify down to that? How did I get rid of that zero? Now, finally, what I've done is done some factoring, and then I used rule 11. Oh, excuse me, I used rule 11 right here. Just rearranged it to get rule 11. B or with not B is a one. It's a one, ultimately CD. So it's pretty cool. You're using those same things that we've gone over thus far. The only difference is we just added in a De Morgan theorem here and a De Morgan theorem there. Otherwise, exactly the same. I'm going to leave you with a parting gift right here. I've got two example problems I want you to work on by yourself, X and Y. Let's see if you can come up with a simplified version of these things. Okay, I'm going to give you some answers. Whoops, let me get the black pen that you should be getting. But before I give you some answers, I'm going to give you some hints. Okay, and the hints that I give you are don't take all of them at once. I may not be giving you all the hints too, and I may not be giving you in the direction that you initially start with, but it's a way that you can potentially get to those answers. So go ahead and pause the recording, see if you can knock out X, see if you can knock out Y by yourself, and then look at the hints. Once you've looked at the hints, then see if you can get the answers. So I'm gonna give you the hints for X right now. So there's the hints for one of the ways I ended up do an X, what I did, a, I did a De Morgan's. Where am I going to do the De Morgan's? Figure it out. Uh, maybe distribute from there. Use rule number four, which is A ended with not A is equal to zero. Use rule number one, which is A ended with zero is equal to zero. Use rule number five, which is A or zero is equal to A. Distribute. What are you going to distribute? Figure it out. There's a common term there somewhere. Or excuse me. Um, you you don't have to worry about the common term for distribution. I'll use rule number three. A and A is equal to A. Finally, factor out what is the common term. Use rule number eight. 
a or not a is equal to 1. And then from there, you can use rule number 2, a and 1 is equal to a. Ultimately, you should be getting the following answer, not b and c. Okay, go give it a shot at number, excuse me, letter y there. It looks like we've got a and did with b, or with a and c, the whole thing negated. Or with not a, and it with not b, and it with c. Sounds like there might be some De Morgans. Maybe a De Morgans following a De Morgans. So go ahead and try that. And here are the hints. It's a little bit of a tough one there. So yeah, it is a double De Morgans. You have to distribute. You can use rule three a and a is equal to a, and you're going to use rule ten twice. And it's kind of neat how you use rule ten. What is rule ten? A or I'm gonna write it out. A or a and b is equal to a. It's got to match that form. It's you're not going to see it look uh, written out like this. Just got to match that that pattern. Ultimately, if you've done this thing correctly, your answer should be. And again, you're pausing this thing. Keep work those things out. You should get an answer like this. So it should be not a or with not b and it with not c. And now this is a cool one because is think about the picture of this thing. Think about the circuit. How can you design the circuit? And once you've drawn it, think about how you can more efficiently potentially create this thing using the remorgans there. And that's kind of a little play on words I referred to earlier. Okay, think about what that answer looks like. There you go. It's not A or with not B and not C. There's three inverters, an AND gate and an OR gate. Is there a potential way I could even simplify this further using the remorgans there? Again, I'm crediting Professor Kleitz for that. What about using a negative AND for that? What's the negative AND? How about a NOR gate? So I just got rid of two gates. I don't need those two inverters if I just grab a NOR gate. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, this concludes this portion of the lecture. And now that we know the De Morgan's equivalent, we've used the De Morgan's equivalent in conjunction with the Boolean rules, we're actually going to take another look. Believe it or not, we're going to take another look. There's still more to learn about the NAND gate and the NOR gate. And I've referred to it earlier, and some of you guys may have taken these extra steps to take a look at how we can combine the NAND gates and NOR gates to create other gates.